Well, Carol Sue, come on up here. I asked Carol to come up and sing this song with me, and she didn't know that. <laughs> but I, no, that's not what I asked her to come up here for. Um, I, uh, w last week, we talked about this season of giving. We talked about stewardship uh, a little bit, and we talked about a need of a church that was in Honduras. There are needs all over the world, and there are needs of churches all over the world. This particular one, uh, there is a missionary family there who was part of our ministry, and, and we knew. Uh, Carol had emailed him and just said, let us know about uh, things that y'all are praying about and and there are multiple churches that he's involved with there in this one church a little church was praying that they uh, would uh, be able to get a bathroom so they've been saving up money for for uh, apparently several months and and money uh, is much tighter there than it is even in our economy here and so I'll let you know about that need and uh, the Lord is blessed in that way should I go ahead and tell them about that or you want to tell them? oh what okay we got enough money from you folks as this week has gone on, even up to this morning, uh, to put on a really nice bathroom. <laughs> and that's a wonderful blessing. Um, they could probably do a his and a hers. But uh, for, as even what had come in this morning, and, and every amount, even though it was more than what, was, what they requested, is going to be used for that church and on that church. Carol's got pictures of that church, and I'm going to let her share some here. But um, you folks, out of your graciousness at where that need, uh, gave over $1,200 over the last week. Their need was about 400 and that's a beautiful thing. If our church will continue to reach out to, to see the needs of folks who are here and folks potentially abroad when God brings them to our source. And, and we are a conduit of ministry to other people. You as individuals, we as a church, then uh, God is going to bless. And God's not just going to uh, bless financially, and he may. He's not just going to bless with blessings on this earth, but it's going to be part of those things that he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, listen a little bit as Carol shares with you some of what Brady has written back to her. And also, those monies are going to go directly, and she may share more of this, but directly into an account in Lubbock, Texas, that they have access to. And so it'll go right into their hands. It's not going to go through a governmental thing or anything else or an organization it's going to go straight to that church every dime that you gave and that's why this was special okay i just wanted to read the ps of the email it said many of you have told me that if you could ever help out with anything here to let you know and that you wanted to it to be something specific the last two attachments are of the little church building is 475 square feet we are helping get it get it off its feet in a nearby village named El Sauce and I'm sure that's not how you say that but anyway that's what it's spelled like uh, they have been selling baked goods and giving their own money for the last nine months to put in a bathroom as and right now they don't as they don't have any such facilities they have put together $75 and have bought the toilet and some of the materials the restroom will cost in total 400 they subsequently plan on building a fence on top of the wall, see the picture, to keep the kids from falling off and to keep people out of the property because um, last week somebody tried to steal, steal the metal chairs to sell them. If anyone would like to help out, please let me know. 100% of any gift would go to this budding church. So I talked to Brady and this morning he had sent me another um, uh, attachment of a young, of a, I'm not a young man, but an older man. Um, and I just want to read a little bit of this just so that you can know what Brady's heart is like. He's, um, we feel like he's one of our kids, but he loves the Lord so much in his ministry. He just wants to see people grow and come to Jesus. And he had sent me a, a, a picture of a man's hands that had tattoos all over them. And I'm going to just kind of pick out some of these parts just so that you can see some of the work that's going on there. <clears throat> He said, eight years ago, as a pimp on the streets of the second hottest capital city in the world, uh, this young man, uh, Walter, used his hand to hold a crutch to help him limp from one, uh, quote, co-worker to the next, gathering with his very hand the profits from their work. He limps, you see, because his hand failed him once. He was in a street fight and with an opposing gang and lost. As a consequence, they cut his Achilles tendon, and for the rest of his life, he walks with a crutch and a limp. Only a minor setback for a moderately successful pimp business. But collecting uh, these ladies' revenues is only the beginning of this hand story. A co-worker of mine walked across the same street and shared with him the story of another man's hands. Um. 
hands that received nails for Walter and his women. As it turns out, God had been preparing Walter for this moment. When offered material on the forgiveness of his terrible sin-laden past, he extended this very hand and took it. That was the beginning of the end for Walter, the end of a life lived for himself, the beginning of a life lived for a greater cause. Eight years later, eight years later in a plaza bursting with busy people and hurried activities, I saw this very same hand raised in the air, extended to a crowd of people, Bible and literature in hand, unashamedly preaching the word of God. Amen. And as the message closed, I saw another hand nervously extend heavenward, the hand of a 17 or 18-year-old young man desiring to receive more information about the very topic shared with Walter only eight years ago. Up this fellow's hand went, expressing his desire to hear more about the same message that saved Walter, another story beginning. As for me, this is Brady, I am blessed to be able to see Walter's hands raised in my classes, desiring to answer questions about the king of the universe. My part is really very simple in Walter's story. My job is to better equip him to grow, to study, to preach, to lead others in the same type of transformation that God has accomplished in his life. I am so thankful for each one of you who, through your prayers and support, allow me to do this work. This kid, um, when he was a senior in high school, one day... Michael and all the girls and I came home, and um, there was no none of our immediate family there, but he was sitting in the recliner. He had fixed him a glass of tea. He had a remote in his hand watching TV, and he was talking on the phone because we loved him as our own, and, and we've seen him grow, and we've seen him uh, just come to love the Lord more and more every single day. He and Becky are expecting their fifth child and, um, in, I think, springtime. And they're, um, at this, they're finishing up their first year in Honduras, and they love every single minute of it. The stories we could tell you from over there are just, some of them, horrendous. Um, but just like Michael said, there's needs here, there's needs there. But I truly know that God is going to bless this body because of the way that you have shown um, stepping outside of a comfort zone or stretching yourself just a little bit to say, God, how do you want to use me? And it might have been $5, it might have been $100, it might have been, I don't know how much. But you wanted to be used, and God is going to bless that. Thank you. And I have these pictures, and I'll lay them out on the bar back there if you want to see them, his little church. And it's going to be so important to have that fence up because there's a little bitty cliff right back here. So it'll keep their kids from falling off and stuff but there's a few pictures and of Walter and stuff like that so you can look at those thanks beautiful there is uh, you can see pictures of that I ask her to print those off so you can see what that little church looks like and and we're not undertaking that church at this time as our mission thing this was one opportunity that the Lord has given us in that way but there's nothing short of a beautiful parallel in realizing that when we put into that church, as you have, and the Lord's going to bless that, um, not just a physical cliff and a fence that's going to be laid up there, but you've put a spiritual fence up there to keep people from falling. And that's a beautiful thing for us to do. And, and the fact that the Lord allowed us to be aware of that through Carol's correspondence and prayers with these folks is another blessing. <laughs>